Hi, welcome to a special edition of the Startup Show, uh, sponsored by the Small Business Chamber of Commerce. Today we're going to do uh, a webinar, and we're going to talk about an overview of what is the Small Business Chamber of Commerce, how can it be helpful to you. Now, what's the problem? Why are we doing this? Uh, the problem is the declining innovation, uh, productivity, and standard of living because of the greatly diminished dynamism and vitalism brought about by the heavy hand of corporatism and socialism. Now, who says this? It's um, Edmund Phelps, Nobel Prize winning economist in his latest book, Mass Flourishing. You know, the problem in America business today is a little bit hidden because we have this uh, publicity machine in place that helps us think that we're very, very creative and innovative today. But this Nobel Prize winning economist, Edmund Phelps, has documented the fact that that's just not true. We've had a real slowdown in innovation. And uh, Phelps lays it at the, uh, at the feet of the lack of dynamism and vitalism in the uh, society today. People are slackers today compared to what we used to be. Now, the reason for that is these large corporations, and uh, some people call them socialism and sheepskin, the large bureaucracy can just grind the life out of people. And the alternative to that is people seeing that there is an alternative, even if they don't take it. So we think we're doing some good with what we're doing at the Small Business Chamber for the people that start now, and also for the people that may want to start in the future and just are glad to know it's there as an option. We want to help get America moving again, and um, Dr. Phelps has seen the problem where trying to bring about a bit of a solution that we think could catch on quickly with the internet. And if you'd like to start uh, a similar activity with your local chamber, give me a call. I'd love to help you. And a copy of this one-page summary of what we're doing to address that problem is on our uh, small business uh, website. You can take a look at it there. But the solution to this problem of declining productivity, declining innovation, despite the fact that we look creative, you know, with the cell phone apps, Silicon Valley, and so forth, America's greatly changed from the period of time when we really flourished. It used to be everybody drove to work thinking about how they could do their job better. Those days are long gone. Today, surveys show that 80% of the people hate their job. You may hate your job. That might be why you're thinking of starting something new that you'd really like to do. And we believe we can help change this problem, uh, the lack of dynamism and vitalism, by what we're doing in the Small Business Chamber of Commerce. Uh, membership's free. All you do is inter introduce yourself on our Facebook page and um, then like the page and share it with your friends. And if we can generate some momentum, we think this could become a national movement. And we'd like your help in getting it started. Now, there are free meetings each week. That's right, they're free. So it's free membership, free meetings. And the purpose of the meeting is to try to uh, hone the practice uh, in our small business chamber startup method. The four practices are, first of all, um, faith. And the meeting that helps hold our practice in that is root and branch. And it uh, focuses on the 12 steps and on meditation. Uh, imagination is one of the practices, and that's the purpose of our Idea Cafe startup praxis. Uh, clear thinking and decision making is one of our practices, and uh, that's honed each week at Socrates Cafe. And I personally facilitate the Socrates Cafe at the University of Denver each uh, Saturday evening. And then finally, independent self-directed learning is a critical skill for anybody today. Uh, you know, in today's world, lifelong learning is absolutely mandatory, but school is optional. You may choose to go back and get yet another bachelor's degree, uh, some of my friends have done. But you may want to uh, just hone your skills in self-directed learning. And that's what we do with our Franklin Circles. They're 
peer advisory groups, they're adult self-directed learning groups, and these four groups are the substance of the Small Business Chamber of Commerce. It's not rocket science, but there are things that I've learned leading these meetings over the last few years that I share with the people who attend and then want to start meetings of their own. Now the program, uh, we say get with the program, is comprised of uh, trying to live one day at a time. You know, we've gotten into this corporatism uh, this really socialistic way of thinking about business with strategic planning. That's a radical change from when uh, business was in its heyday in this country. And uh, McKinsey and company shifted to strategic planning only after Boston Consulting Group came along and, and sort of forced them into it. When McKinsey first started, uh, it, it was in the mainstream of business, and what they knew is that uh, responding to operational details was the important thing. And this idea that we have today of strategy was just totally non-existent. So what we do is promote the idea of um, one day at a time. And one day at a time, with God's help, you know, we can love, be in a good fit spiritual condition, to um, love our neighbor as ourself, and to uh, be helpful. Ben Franklin started every day by asking himself, what good can I do today? And that's far different than um, some of the things that were taught uh, about writing down what I want. I want leads to strategy, yes, but strategy may be what's strangling America with this corporatism and socialism. Um, now, the, the practices, are, it's not necessary that you come to the groups. There are other ways to fill that need, but we believe these practices are four focuses that help our members uh, do more good work. So the four practices, uh, we have these free groups that can help you at least get started in them. Uh, they're not necessarily meant to become something you do every week, but they help maybe give you a boost. The Idea Cafe is best held, we feel, Friday afternoons. Uh, the intention is to give people a boost who are at the end of the week and uh, aren't quite sure what they're gonna do Monday morning. My friend Harvey said the most important question in business is, what are you gonna do Monday morning? And if you're not quite sure and it's Friday afternoon, and you're in Denver, think about the uh, Denver Idea Cafe Startup Praxis. And we're hoping that people will pick up this same way of doing a meeting and that it will spread quickly in cooperation with local chambers across the country to offer an alternative to the uh, Small Business Administration SBDC approach of careful market research, careful strategic planning, what I was taught in graduate business school, but it's the reason I call myself a recovering MBA because I've had to overcome that way of thinking about business to be truly helpful to people who are starting something new. Now what does it take to start a new business? It takes a customer. And uh, the more time that you are spending on that pursuit of the customer and serving that customer's needs, the better off you're going to do in a, in a small startup. Now the rules change, of course, once you get going. And then the, the normal management tools play a much bigger role. But going from zero to one which Peter Thiel calls his new book. I've been using that term for decades. But going from zero to one is just a different animal. It's sort of like the difference between an OBGYN and a doctor that practices sports medicine. So what we focus on is the OBGYN, the pediatrician part of business at the uh, Small Business Chamber. And if you'd like to uh, visit We'd like to have you uh, come and talk with us. Uh, I'm also available to talk with you one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to know more about how you could start a group like that with your local chamber. So my name's John Wren, uh, Small Business Chamber of Commerce. Take a look at our website. Give me a call. We'd like to help you do more good work. So overall, our society's problem is this lack of dynamism and vitalism. What do you think about when you're going to work? You know, in the morning when you're driving in, 
Are you getting out of bed and going to your desk at home? Are you looking forward to the day or are you sort of dreading it? Uh, are you moving ahead with your business? Has it started and is it growing? And if not, if you're not flourishing, you may want to think about uh, you and I talking about your particular situation. You know, you can give me a call and um, invite me to come and speak to your fraternity, your sorority, your service club, uh, neighborhood association. I'm glad to come and speak with your group. Or call me and let's you and I get together one-on-one -on -one and discuss your situation in more detail and see if the knowledge and experience that I've had can be helpful to you. Hi, I'm John Wren. I uh, do business consulting. I'm the founder of the Small Business Chamber of Commerce. And people ask me, how did I get into this? And uh, why am I doing it? Well, I'm doing it because I think there's a real need for it. There's a lot of bad information about startup and very small business. And I hope that I'm a small counterweight to some of that bad information. You know, the OBGYN and the physician that practices sports medicine are two entirely different um, types of practices. And what we do is lump the large corporate practices, uh, which, you know, the first, first MBA was granted by uh, Harvard, 1912 or so. And what we do is sort of pretend that the startup is like General Motors, but they're just a little bit smaller. And they're really a totally different animal. Going from zero to one is a different exercise. And I've experienced that myself repeatedly. And uh, I believe I can be helpful to you if we sit down and work together. But even more so, I think I'm good at facilitating the start of a group where you can act as each other's sounding board, peer advisory, adult self-directed learning groups that can, uh, can help you each do more good work. It's not that the group takes action together, but the group comes together and learns from each other. Uh, I stole the idea from Ben Franklin. Sometimes people say, well, who's, who's doing these Franklin circles? And I say, well, in a way, it's me and Ben Franklin. Um, I got interested in this idea of how do you learn about business when I went back to graduate business school. Had an undergraduate liberal arts degree. I value it greatly. Uh, had a small business and then decided that I really maybe would benefit from going back to school. And, uh, that, and I got a great job with Outdoor Sports Industries as assistant to the president, a national stock exchange company that um, uh, Dick Olson was a trustee at the University of Denver. I'd read this book, the Victor Phillips, the assistant to position. And um, it really inspired me to want to get the job of assistant to. And I still recommend this to people. If you're in school and thinking about what you're going to do next, there are entry level positions, but you can create a job for yourself as the assistant too. And I, I try to help people do that when it makes sense. Uh, I worked for outdoor sports. I had other jobs. I started doing consulting. And uh, I became very interested in the idea of adult self-directed learning. I was in the Denver Public Library, and a copy of Training Magazine was on the shelf in current periodicals, and uh, had an article that mentioned this group that Ben Franklin had uh, formed with his friends back in 1727. And I read all I could about it, a lot of biographies about Franklin, probably more books written about Franklin than any other person. Uh, he was a tremendous person, and uh, this was my favorite. It's Dr. Brand's The First American. It has a passage where Ben Franklin has the idea of America. You know, that's sort of a fictional, who knows what was in Ben Franklin's mind, but I think it may be very close to what happened. And uh, if Franklin hadn't had that vision and come back and helped uh, the people that were already upset, and he kind of focused that. And, uh, but one of the reasons he was able to play that role with the founding of America is this adult self-directed learning group that he formed that I read about in Training Magazine. And uh, I got very interested in uh, the, the article that also mentioned Malcolm Knowles. And uh, this is my favorite book of Malcolm Knowles. 
self-directed learning, a guide for learners and teachers. And self-directed learning, it's not that the group is all learning about the same thing at the same time. They have similar interests, but they gather and are a sounding board or an audience for each other. Uh, all of self-directed learning, all of adult education really boils down to this. Adults learn best by being the teacher. So in these groups, uh, the members of the group take turns uh, presenting to the others. And uh, also each week, there's a structured way of sharing around the table to share what members are learning currently. And it's a really powerful meeting. I now help service clubs and others convert their meeting format into this adult self-directed learning format. And I help people who want to start a new group get the wheel up and rolling. Um, now the, the kind of group that's my very, very favorite is a group of people who would like to be in business for themselves. They may, you know, there's sort of four phases to being in your own business. In the first phase, you just make the decision. Yes, I want to be in business. My dad said he made that decision when his aunt told him whatever he did, he should be in business for himself, even if it was just to own a popcorn stand. And my dad, you know, really kept that in mind. He got out of the Navy, had a job in a wholesale company, and decided he'd come to Colorado to start a similar business. And I was right there at his side. I was three years old. One of my earliest memories is him calling me to go to the warehouse with him in Loveland, Colorado, before he moved the business to Denver. And uh, so I always had this interest in startup. I'd been there with my dad as he had started his business, and I, he had friends that were in business for themselves. And so when I went to graduate business school, and this was before Inc. Magazine, it was before startup became as popular, and. I believe misguided as it is today, uh, I really had this curiosity about startup. Businesses really just don't start with planning and market research. The publisher of Inc. Magazine said it, up to that point it was the most important, the single most significant contribution to our understanding of an entrepreneurship to date. George Gidron, editor-in-chief, Inc. Magazine. And really, I think that's true today because this book was an inspiration for maybe the book that's better known. And uh, this is the tattered cover of my copy, which has been well used. Just Start. And Just Start, Harvard Business Review Press, written a couple of years ago by Leonard Schlesinger, who at that time was president of Babson College, and Charlie Kiefer, who has a big reputation. And uh, he's in Peter Senge's book, The Learning Organization. These are two really solid people. And this book sums up what successful entrepreneurs do. What they do is they just start. Uh, they have a one-page summary in the very back of the book. And uh, this is sort of the expanded version. Number one, know what you want. So I get up and I think, what is it I'm being inspired to do? Number two, Take a smart step towards that desire as quickly as you can. That is, act with the means at hand, stay within your acceptable loss, and bring others along, if it makes sense. Number three, make reality your friend. Accept what is and build off what you find. In other words, each day as you have these experiences, you learn and then you adjust the next day. And number four, repeat steps two and three until you accomplish your goal or until you decide it's not possible, or if you decide you'd rather do something else. So in the very back, that's their one-page summary, you know, but it's, um, you, you think, you do, you learn, you build, and you go forward on that basis. And it's not sitting down and planning a punch list of everything that's gonna have to be done until you, exit the business and you have an exit strategy. That's what a lot of people talk about doing. They've uh, sort of overcomplicated startup and I'm always just so grateful that my dad did not take a class in entrepreneurship. He didn't stumble into an SBA office. As a matter of fact, SBA hadn't even started. He started in 1949. Four years later under the Eisenhower administration, the Small Business uh, Association started. 
And I think it was probably well-intentioned at the time, and they've done some good. I think in disaster relief, they do a lot of good, and with a more mature business, they can help sometimes. They had testimonials on every once in a while how they give a boost to a business that's already underway. But for going from zero to first sale, the SBA just doesn't get it. And it's really not all their fault because academia doesn't get it that it's a different animal. And it's, you know, if, if a hospital, if a medical school was teaching OBGYN to do sports medicine, it would become readily apparent that this was not helpful to the newborn baby. And, you know, the startup rate is just dramatically falling in this country. I think that's the cause. And we're trying to do the little bit that we can to try to correct the situation with, um, the work that I'm doing. So if you'd like to uh, get some help, if you're, uh, you know, you hate your job, 80% of the people in America hate their job. They, if you hate your job, you're thinking of some alternative. Uh, and it may not be to start a business immediately. Sometimes the best way to start a business is to get a job in the direction of your dreams. So if you want to open a coffee shop, you know, the best move would be to go work in a coffee shop and uh, learn the ropes before you start your own. So, uh, but if you, you don't like what you're doing now, you want to change direction with your career. You feel like you can be more helpful to people. You're, what you're doing now is not satisfying you. It's not satisfying the customers. Um, or maybe you've started something, but just barely. You know, maybe you've got this idea, you've done some work, but you don't have your first customer yet. Or maybe you've got the first customer, but you can't quite turn it into a business. Well, then give me a call. Uh, you and I can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if you're in Denver, I'm gonna invite you to come to the Idea Cafe Startup Praxis. Maybe we think about starting a Franklin Circle. But I'd like to help you do more good work. If that's what you'd like to do, give me a call. And uh, I'd like to bring my experience and, and the uh, knowledge that I've gained over these last few years to bear in your particular situation if I can be helpful to you. So give me a call and uh, let's see where it goes from there. Uh, Socrates didn't think things should be written down. You know, it wasn't by accident that uh, Socrates didn't, he certainly could write, he was literate. Jesus certainly could write, but they, neither one wrote anything. Why? Because it's different being in the same room with someone talking than it is reading the book. And the book gets in the way of a good conversation. And that same thing may be happening with the video. Uh, now there's so much video out there that to think that we need to do more video, I'm just not sure that's the case. Uh, r right now there are lots of groups, but most of them are uh, an inch deep and a mile wide. You know, these networking meetings, you go into them and you leave and you feel, you know, sort of beat up in a way. They're very, very difficult for most people. Or, or you get all hyped up and you're kind of like overexcited. But as far as being something where you can sit down and thoughtfully consider uh, topics that are important to you for one reason or another, uh, the books, the video, the networking meetings may get in the way. So what we may do is reorient ourselves back to these getting people in the same room and let us sit down and reason together. That's really what I think there's a lack of. But maybe I'm wrong. So if you have a topic you'd like to see us address in a webinar type presentation like this next week, call me and we'll do it. Uh, Call at 303-861-1447. You know, this life is very short. So give me a call right now. Give me a call. Let's get started moving towards making your dream a reality. Hi, I'm Dan Worley, uh, Secretary-Treasurer of the South Denver Optimist Club. 
Um, we've been enjoying the format uh, that John Wren introduced us to for about two years now. Prior to the implementation of this roundtable discussion format for our club meetings, we tended to have anywhere from six to eight members in attendance. And since this has become much more popular with the group, we tend to see our membership at the meetings increasing and the overall membership for the club is also increasing. If you want to see the membership of your club increase, call us today. We'll help you attract more members and get more active participation from all your members. The Small Business Chamber of Commerce, Denver, Colorado, 303-861-1447. Or